This is Andy Perrault of Boxing News. We're here in Las Vegas and I'm joined by trainer Sugar Hill Stewart. I was about to say in the sunny and the hot Vegas. It's not. It's, um, it's, it's very... Right. you got the lights on, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> Sugar, how's life doing? Um, it's been a minute since I last saw you. Yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, try to stay busy and uh, keep myself learning and keep myself sharp. Keep yourself sharp. You get to keep yourself sharp in the corner once again on Saturday night. An unbelievable fight on the horizon. Sabrina Matias versus your man, Shohajan. Just walk me through what you're expecting in this one. From a fan's perspective, it can only deliver fireworks. Uh, pretty simple. I'm only expecting a tough fight. Um, sometimes you have tough fights, sometimes you don't. This is for a world championship at 140 pounds. Um, I expect a tough fight. I know Matias is a... I've seen him fight and he's tough. So uh, it's pretty much nothing else to say. I've been training in Shojahon for uh, well, maybe four to seven years, something like that. <laughs> I've lost track, but uh, I believe he's ready, and this is the perfect time for it. And uh, I'm happy that uh, he's fighting a, a man like Matias, uh, who's a tough fighter, who's a champion, and who's proven himself. And uh, you know that kind of fight is a fight that gives that will give Shojahon credit, you know, as being a champion. Matias in the boxing world is certainly very well known. He's seen as somewhat of a, I don't want to say a boogeyman, but a very difficult fight, a hard man, a very um, strong and KO happy man, shall we say. What gives you the confidence that Shojahan can stand up to the power of Sabrina Matias, who also carries a huge power within his hands as well? Well, because uh, we've been training and I feel that Shojahan is ready for this fight. Uh, there was times in his career where he was possibly maybe moving towards the title shot, but this is the perfect time perfect opponent and everything. At 140, Shojahan have his, has his hands raised. He's obviously an open division, some terrific fights that could be made. Um, but a victory against Sabrina Matias, do you think that would escalate your man to be him the number one in the division? I don't know. I don't think that far. I just, if, uh, you know, when that time comes for his, for his hand to be raised, and he's the champion to me. It doesn't matter to me about him being number one in the division uh, or anything like that. Uh, after that, you know, uh, him and his management promotions and stuff, they would sit down and, and work out the next plan. My job only is just to train him to make him win. I don't really care too much about the other stuff. I stay in my lane, which is the trainer. Sugar, a man we, know, we both know very well, Mr. Ben Whitaker. He's back, Bournemouth, December 10th, a Sunday. Um, excited now to hopefully get a, a real good run going for him and see him back out. Yeah, I think this would be great for Ben uh, at the end of the year just to kick something off, you know, get him started a lot more fresher than maybe some other fighters who didn't fight, but it's to give him a, like a running start for the new year. And uh, I'm happy that he's, uh, he's on the card and he's uh, ready to fight and uh, been training. And uh, he seems pretty excited about it, just as myself. When Ben turned over, there was a lot of excitement. A lot of people wanted to sign him, a lot of people wanted to train him, a lot of people wanted to promote him, whichever way you want to look at it. There's obviously been that bit of a stagnant part in his career due to injuries. You go into 2024 now, Sugar. Is it on your mind as well? I know there's nothing you can do about it, but you want to see him active. You want to try and get him out as much as possible and really kind of get that name going again, get everybody talking about Ben Whitaker. Uh, it's, it's not really on my mind. It's on my, what's on my mind now is that he's fighting, you know, uh, December the 10th, and uh, he's ready to fight. And uh, as far as injuries, uh, Every fighter's had injuries in their life, and to be honest and truthfully, no elite athlete is going into a, a, a competitive um, fight, game, sport, you know, event or whatever challenge. They're not going in there 100%. Nobody does that. It's almost unheard of, and if it is, it's like, okay, very seldom few because when you're at that elite level, you're pushing yourself, and when you push yourself, you're going to get injuries and stuff. So, um, yeah, for that matter, as far as I look at it and what I think and believe is everyone's injured to some point. It's just uh, if you're injured too much, you know, not to continue. And I have to be funny. So when you're watching, uh, when you're watching football, like soccer, football, I mean, those guys are getting injured and they jump back up and playing again. So <laughs> I don't know, mate. Uh, Sugar, uh, you know, a lot of soccer players these cards, days, they stay yellow, down. Yellow cards and red cards and they getting back up and, and scoring three goals. And they, they clearly seem to be in so much pain that they should have been not carried out in the stretcher, but they're not. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what it, you know, in, in some cases, that's what it takes to be an athlete, athlete is to, to endure that pain where nobody else is going to endure and to continue to push themselves. 
Just looking at how camp will line up for yourself, Sugar. Um, obviously, you've got Ben who's fighting on December 10th. We've just had the Fury Usyk fight announced uh, for February 17th. How are things going to look for you now when you're going to move back over, when you're going to start your training camp up? I don't really know. I just take everything in stride. First of all, I'm here with uh, Shoja Hoon Ergashoff and then uh, to Ben Whitaker. And, you know, things change in boxing so much, so I don't really look so far ahead like that because if they change, I don't feel like making new plans and doing things like that. I just kind of go with the flow. And they seem to work out okay. Just don't think about it so much. So that's how you stay looking young. <laughs> Do you think you'll stay over um, when you're after Ben's fight for Christmas in Morecambe with Tyson? I don't know. I've thought about it, but never to the extent like what you're asking me. I thought about, hmm, maybe I'll stay over there. Maybe I won't. There's nothing definite uh, right now, so just going with the flow. Um, just to obviously on to that fight, Fury Usyk, it's official. The undisputed heavyweight crown, Feb 17th, Saudi Arabia. When I've asked you about it before, Sugar, you've said you haven't really had much to say because there's been no official fight announcement, no poster to look at. We have all of that now. We had an announcement press conference. All we've got to do now is the build-up, look forward to that fight to come around. As you as a coach, how excited are you to be a part of history? Two words. Great news. <laughs> so everything's uh, everything seems to be, you know, going forward and it is it's great news it's great news uh for me for tyson for Usyk, his team uh and for the people of boxing the sport uh for the for this is the heavyweight championship this is for everything so you have it in other other divisions but here you have it at the heavyweight division tyson is adamant alexander Usyk is not the toughest test of his career where would you say alexander Usyk will rank in his career not sure yet. Uh, Alexander Usyk's been a uh, champion for a long time and he's been undefeated. And uh, he's going to always pose a challenge to anyone. So most important is just to train as hard as you can, prepare for everything, and go out there and look for the knockout. <laughs> Are you confident that knockout will come about come Feb 17th before Tyson? I'm always confident of a knockout. Even if I don't get it, I have to stay positive and keep myself and keep the fighter. We go for the knockout. It's like, uh, you know, you want to shoot for the stars. If you, if you don't land on the stars, you land on the moon, I guess is what they say. Something like that. Shoot for the stars, you land on the moon. If you shoot for the moon, you fall short. So, yeah, always shoot for the stars. But always bang, get it over with. The challenge of Alexander Usyk, Sugar, you haven't had to prepare Tyson for a fight like that so far, working together. How do you go about defeating the undisputed cruiserweight king, a unified heavyweight king, and trying to make your man the undisputed heavyweight king? Um, I think a lot of people undercredit and discredit and don't even think about Tyson as a boxer and they think of Alexander Usyk as just uh, this great boxer that can't be touched uh, because of his footwork and things that he's learned over the years which has brought him to this point which is great uh, but Tyson Fury himself is a great boxer and with the things he's done in his career and his life have brought him to this point here so you got two fighters with these uh, abilities and these great characteristics and unique gifts are brought here to compete against each other. This is the heavyweight division, once again, the big heavyweights, the big dogs, the granddaddy of the divisions, I mean, of the sport and boxing, and uh, they get to meet for the undisputed. We know Tyson loves to trash talk. He's somebody who generally throughout his career has had success in somewhat getting beneath the skin of his opponents. We had the announcement press conference. Alexander Usyk never really seemed to take much notice of it and he hasn't throughout his career. Um, did, you, did you watch any of that? Do you sense any frustration maybe on uh, Tyson's behalf that he doesn't look like he's able to kind of roll up Alexander Usyk? Well, Tyson's Tyson, right? He's always talking, right? And Alexander's Alexander. He's never saying nothing. So it doesn't seem too much uh, out of the ordinary for me. Uh, Tyson's going to talk regardless to if somebody talks to him or not, and Alexander Usyk's not going to say anything, as he's always been doing. So I see it quite, I see it quite unfolding the way it should be. How does it unfold then? How does it unfold then? Oh, it unfolds on uh, February the seventeenth. <laughs> uh, you're asking me a question, which I know you just wanted to hear it. Always going for the knockout, Tyson Fury. Knockout, bang, over. When people mention Tyson going into this fight, in particular, people kind of draw the comparisons. Both good boxers. Tyson has shown that kind of ability to be able to stop his opponents more recently. But one of the biggest advantages he has, and he's always been good at, is using his size to his advantage. How key will that be come Feb 17? 
Uh, well, his size is his reach. So Tyson Fury has a, you know, he's tall, he's got long reach, and he can box. So all of, all of those things would be great attributes to Tyson Fury uh, defeating Alexander Usyk in we, what we call a fantastic fashion uh, in which we solely are training for or will train for uh, myself and for Tyson is a knockout. Obviously, there have been some critics since the Francis Ngannou fight, just to kind of go back over that, Sugar. What was your reflections now? A bit of time to set, uh, settled. What did you take away from the Fury Ngannou fight? Well, I'll just take away that Tyson Fury is fighting um, Usyk now, February the 17th. Uh, Tyson, he won that fight with Francis Ngannou, and now he's fighting Alexander Usyk. No doubts in your own mind moving forward that Tyson hasn't kind of somewhat hit the decline as some have suggested? I don't know. I never heard that. Didn't think so uh, when he fought uh, his previous fights uh, since I've been training him. So, uh, yeah, I'm very confident in training Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury being Tyson and for him uh, doing his thing as he always does. Just on a sparring note, um, I spoke to Jaya Pattaya and Jaya's obviously made it um, quite clear with the media that the team's reached out about potentially sparring Tyson. and obviously Jaya the uh, world champion down at Cruiserweight. Will you be planning on trying to bring him into camp, trying to emulate the style of Alexander Usyk for Tyson? If that's what we need, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely try to bring in whoever we need to bring in. And uh, those conversations will continue and, uh, until we make that proper potion to get the job done. Sticking with cruiserweights, um, you have your own cruiserweight charge, Mr. Lawrence Akoli. He has opted against to be immediate rematch with Chris Billum Smith. Have you had any conversations as to what he will look to do next? Will he look to maybe have an interim fight whilst Chris deals with uh, Matthias Masternak and if he comes through that, try and pursue that rematch then? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything yet. I'm just waiting for a phone call to, to let for him to let me know uh, what his plans are. And uh, at that point, I would be able to comment any further, but as of now, I don't have anything to comment about. Um, I do see that Chris Billum Smith is fighting as as well, uh, and Ben Whitaker is fighting on his undercard. So uh, that says a lot to me where I don't have to ask questions. But whatever's next for Lawrence is, uh, you know, he'll let me know and then we can uh, move forward. How much longer do you feel like he has at Cruiserweight? I don't know. Yeah. That's <laughs> fair enough, Shogi, just because obviously it's been a topic for a while about Listen, Lawrence I making. Be like, oh, I don't know, or yes, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start saying some stuff which I clearly have no knowledge of. Um, you know, each person has their own body, and it does different things at different times in their life. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Sugar, away from that one, just your thoughts on a couple of the fights on the horizon. Anthony Joshua and Otto Wallin, what do you make of that bout on December 23rd? I think it'll be a very good fight. That's one, I, 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 I think of it as this. It's interesting for me. I'll be watching it. And I don't even watch boxing that much, but that one I'll be watching. What's the next one? Just Ani, um, do you feel like there's demons there for Anthony Joshua to answer in terms of fighting the Southpaw? Granted, Alexander Usyk has fought at a higher level for a longer period than what Otto Wallin has. Different fighter, but still Southpaw. Some questions there for AJ to answer? No, the question is for AJ is to win. I don't know about because he's fighting a softball or not like that. The main thing is to win. So he's fought he's fought right handers and softballs, you know, throughout his career. So it's gotten him whatever he's done has gotten him this far. Devin Haney, Regis Pro Grade, December 9th, for fantastic fight, Sugar. What's your breakdown of that? I don't do breakdowns. <laughs> no, I just know it'll be a fantastic fight. Uh, I've been knowing Devin since he was about 10 years old coming to Detroit training, so obviously I'm rooting for him, and uh, I do think that he can get the job done. You mentioned kind of knowing Devin from such a young age. Does it amaze you kind of where he's got to in his career, how he's looked at as one of the leading names in, the, in those lower divisions? It doesn't amaze me. It's just it's him. It's always been him since he was that age. I remember boxing him uh, when he was a kid, and there was no one to box for him to box in the gym. And... I got there and inspired with him, and really, truthfully, he gave me the most problems at 10 years old than a lot of my other fighters who I've had. So, yeah, he's always been that way. He's always been Devin Haney. He's always been totally, totally into boxing. And as you have um, Ben Whitaker, somebody who he may end up fighting at some point, the winner of uh, Joshua Boatzi Dan Aziz fight, what are your thoughts on them two fighting and, and that bout? Let the best man win. <laughs> I ain't got no thoughts on that. I don't care. Let the best man win. Make it. I just wanted to be a good fight, for it, so it's good for boxing. That's what I care about. 
What about Arta? Better behave than Callum Smith? Arta better behave than Callum Smith? A better man win. I, on that one, I would have to say I think better be of win the fight just because he's just such a strong, massive fighter and so dominant right now. But uh, I still just want to see a good fight. I want it to be a challenging fight. Uh, yeah, I just like excitement. Sugar, you like excitement. We all like excitement. We're in Las Vegas, which usually serves up plenty. And we'll see hopefully some more on Saturday night. Just your thoughts on the main event, Demetrius Andrade and David Benavides. Very tricky. These are undefeated fighters. They both know how to win. And it's just one of those fights where whoever can control what they have to plan, that's the one that's going to win. So uh, both of them just had this tremendous will to win and, and, and can make different things happen. Uh, Andrade is probably one of those fighters that nobody, well, I shouldn't say probably, but he's one of those fighters that nobody wanted to fight. So all props to Benavidez for stepping up to fight him and to uh, not to being afraid, because some people don't want to fight Andrade, just the same as people don't want to fight Benavidez. So you got two people, two fighters that people are uh, afraid to fight, fighting each other, bang, boxing, love it. Sure guys, pleasure to catch up with you as always. I'll hopefully see you soon. Obviously you've got Bournemouth amongst other fights to look forward to. So good luck on Saturday night with Shojahan and thank you for speaking to me on Boxing, boxing News. Thank you. I think they're sending the helicopters after you. <laughs>